That transition from school to first job is huge. It's painful in a lot of ways. It was for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when a lot of individuals come into um, the companies that I've been in, it's their first job. There's, there's just, there's so much to learn, especially about culture and what's acceptable and what's not. And it's, it's, you can't just, you know, read a manual that says here's how you're going to succeed at this company. Right. So you really kind of have to watch people. You kind of have to really figure out the culture and, you know, find friends, go to HR. And for example, what you don't want to do is, you know, if you're in a culture that's formal and you know, talking on your cell phone is not cool. You don't want to be doing that. Right. And some cultures are totally different. People are texting all day long, if they're, whatever. You know, they're, they're that kind of a culture. So you've got to gauge that and read that. Because again, that transition from school to work is a vulnerable one, in my opinion. What we look for when we hire people is that this isn't, you know, it is a job, OK? And then, you know, some days are better than others. But for the most part, you do feel like you're part of this Decker's family. And see, your, your commitment, your heart is really in it at that level. It's work ethic, generally. Of course, there are the more, um, the more interesting things, drugs on the job, drinking on the job, <laughs> sex on the job, whatever it might be. But mm -hmm. no, generally speaking, it's poor work habits. It's bad, um, bad attendance. Yeah. It's dressing inappropriately. And it's bad attitude. Um, and not a skill fit. Yeah. You know, get someone in who um, over embellishes their resume and they can't perform the position. Bezelman can be a big one. Mm. And, you mm -hmm. know, theft is a big one. Oh. I mean, there, there's a lot yeah, of temptation. Don't do that. I mean, don't break the law, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. theft, mis misappropriation, <laughs> mis misuse of company property, you know, mm -hmm. um, just, you know. Oh shoot! Those usage, yeah, like usage of, of email that shouldn't be out there. Mm. I mean, there's there's things like that, but we do have an attendance policy, and people that you think have been just been the greatest employees all of a sudden up to this 12 point level, they're like, but you know, and so you know, it, it, there's there's a wide variety of reasons mm. to choose Ashley. Mm -hmm. Performance is is key, uh, and you do bring up a good point. You know, be honest on your resume and be honest mm. when you're interviewing because it's going to become very apparent about. 30 days mm -hmm. in to your hire that you didn't represent yourself accurately and then it is a performance situation and and it, you know it just isn't going to work out so performance is the main reason folks get um, terminated at Deckers. The biggest thing that you guys can do once you get hired the first day in when you sit down with your supervisor your lead your manager whoever it is sit down and make sure that you're having open and honest dialogue mm -hmm. with that person and when they're saying so here's your first day here's your cube here's your computer get going make sure you say hey 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 what are the expectations what do right. you want me to do and that's your time to say what is it you want me to do what are the expectations you know make sure that you understand what your job is i can't tell you how many times and we do have a check in after our uh, new hire with our groups so we, you know, we'll have them come back six weeks after they've started to say did we represent the company properly to you are you seeing what we thought you were going to see or do you understand the expectations of your job because if they don't understand the expectations we shouldn't say hey you're out of here in 30 days because your performance wasn't good but you guys have to speak up you've got to wave the flag and say i don't really understand exactly how you want me to do that report can you go over it one more time you know so i can't i can't say enough about encouraging you to be very open very honest and and mm -hmm. say to them in that first couple three days, I'm not really understanding that report, or I'm not really understanding where the information is that, that I need to get my hands on. And then it gets much better, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, goal setting is such an important process of an effective performance management system. At Deckers, we take it so seriously that we totally automated the entire process. So it's all done online via a web-based tool. And so the, the process itself forces new hires to sit down with their managers and set objectives, whether that's quarterly or annually as it applies to the individual role, it is all formalized and it's signed off. And then you can check in on it every 30 days or every 60 days. How are we doing? How's this project going? Oops, you haven't even started it? Well, it's due in 30 days. What are you guys going to do about that? So it's really an effective tool and it's a, it's a serious help in ensuring yeah, that people good. are successful. It's very supportive. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For you to move your way up in that and positions for me, for instance, is that you really got to put in the work. You have to put in the time and you have to work your way up for that. Um, when I think of one of our regional directors for our company, she's been with the company for 17 years. She started off as a sales associate. 
you know, and it always mind boggles me because I'm like, really? How did you work your way up all the way up to regional director, <coughs> take a job, entry level, gain your experience, and if you need to move on, move on. Take the next step. Um, if you want to get promoted within your building, have that conversation and open up that dialogue with your supervisor and let them know that you want to be promoted. Uh, one of the biggest things I can tell people in today's um, market and industry is that feedback is a gift. Most people are afraid of it. When you were to have a conversation with somebody and you want to give them that feedback, uh, they're very, it becomes very abrasive and they get very defensive instantly. But the moment you break down that wall and you open that communication up with your supervisor, the feedback that they are able to give you, and then if you take that feedback and actually apply it to the work that you're doing, and they can see that, you're gonna be the first person they promote because they can see that you're moldable, that you're open to that change. Um, so you know, think about feedback as a gift ask for that feedback. It's a little painful sometimes, mm -hmm. but the reality is it's only to help you grow in everything that you do. So it's only going to make you better as a person, in your job, in your personal life, and you'll be happier in the end because you'll know why it is exactly that you were um, maybe staying in that position. You know, how many people have been in a position, in a position where your hours have been cut? And you're like, I don't get it. Why are they cutting my hours? You know? So by having that conversation, opening that dialogue, maybe it was because the employer didn't feel like you were doing a very good job. I mean, maybe the employer isn't as good at the communication as you are. So the main thing I can just put, bring that back to is open up that dialogue between you and the employer. Let them know what your goals are, what you want to do. Um, there's several positions in any industry that you're in. So, you know, you don't want to be the best boy. What do you want to do? You know, you want to work your way up to either being a server, right? You're going to make those tips. So you want to work your way up from being a greeter at the door to, you know, working at the cash register or helping in the fitting room. Just tell them what it is you want to do and ask them what you need to do to get there. And I think another thing is, um, is especially in the field that I work in, is to limit yourself to what your job is. So some people say, well, that's not part of my job. This is what my job is. But you have to stay open. If you stay open and you take on more responsibilities, eventually you, they're going to start seeing that, oh, wow, she can do this and she can execute it, execute it really well and efficiently and it looks good. So those things will start standing out. So I think I see a lot of that sometimes that, oh, well, that's not part of my job and, you know, I stick to this and eventually it could lead to. You know, there's no easy way to the top. They're really, you just have to work your way up. And you have to be willing to to do all of the job duties, whether it was in your original job description or not. And a lot of good points. And I like what Scott said about um, you know, if you are looking to be promoted and there's a position that you want, um, talk to your employer and ask them. You know, I really want that position. Can you let me know what it is I need to do to get it? Tell me what I need to do. You know, um, what will it take to get there? Uh, and most of the time they'll answer you. They'll tell you. You know. So. And then all of a sudden that light bulb goes on and then they're looking at you because they realize that you are ambitious. Mm -hmm. And then when we sit, when we have a manager's meeting and we talk about all of that, your name comes up as somebody that we could promote into a new position because you came to us and opened up that dialogue. And if nothing else, you gain a mentor. And mentors a mentor mm -hmm. within the organization or wherever you're at that has a higher position, they can always show you the way. Yeah. So that's a good way to do it too.